What is going on, Lunatics? Guys, I've got a special treat for you today. I'm gonna to be doing an interview. And if you like this type of content, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe button, the bell to be notified. Guys, I've told you a couple of times there are certain things in this ecosystem that caused the massive sort of spikes. Um, that was the peg that would allow for the burning of Luna that got it down from a billion to 343 million before the collapse. Um, there was the peg and there was Anchor Protocol. Well, Anchor Protocol's coming back. And Anchor Protocol was why people were bringing money and capital and liquidity into uh, the UST, the Terra Luna ecosystem. That was the reason, because you could make a lot of money off of it using a leveraged long strategy, which drove the price to the stratosphere and continued and continued and continued to pump it. Now, guys, it cannot be, um, uh, it, it cannot be overstated how important and impactful this was in this entire ecosystem. So uh, I'm gonna go through this very, very quickly uh, and then we're gonna get to the interview. So uh, again, if you like this type of content, you know what to do. We're gonna start with ye old price action. You are probably looking at your bag wondering what in the absolute F is going on right now. Well, the broader US market, the broader European market, the broader Asian markets, they are in a massive sell-off mode. Now, is it a reason for you to be panicked? Well, if you can't stop looking at your bag, I can't help you from being panicked, but you shouldn't be worried about it. Fundamentally, Bitcoin is still the king. Ethereum is a few days away from an ETF. All of the positive, great things that you want to see in cryptocurrency, they're this far away. The problem is that this is the flush out. Now, what do we talk about all the time? There has to be a max pain at the after the uh, after the having has to be a max pain moment in order to shake people out in order for institution to continue to position themselves in the best possible fashion till that happens we're not going to take off well now we're getting to that point bitcoin currently trading at around 57,000 so we are probably in the thick of things and the question at this point is going to be how far down can they get it before there's too much buy pressure <coughs> and that's the question so until then we're going to see some more downside now we're going to see an immediate reversal and an immediate big spike just like most everything else this is this is just a flush of the system uh again you see it broke down that line right there but it did that a couple days ago and came right back into it so i suspect that in the event you were to accumulate a bit of uh, luna classic today this might be one of those optimal sort of days to see a big reversal bringing it back up into that eight or you know 81 sort of range so uh, that's what i would be looking for i, I don't know how far down it's going to go this is a, a weird market so uh but you know just remember you don't you're not at a loss until you sell uh as far as meme coins goes uh you know, I'm looking at a few of them. Uh, I, as you guys know, I've got base, I've got Terra Luna Cloud, I've got everything stable. I'm expecting that big, big move. Uh, I moved everything to Rakoff yesterday because I, you know, just wanted to see what was going to happen. And speaking of that, we're going to be talking about that. No governance proposals that are up right now. There's nothing to discuss there. Burns two billion. Uh, volume up a little bit, a nice little volume, but it's sell volume down eight percent on the day. Same thing over here, down almost 10% on the day. Just an incredible sell-off happening. Um, a lot of it has to do with, uh, out, look, there's there's no real single factor right now leading to this. There's uh, excuses. There's the U.S. government selling some Bitcoin the other day. There's the outflows in the, the Bitcoin spot ETS, which are two days of less than 20 million. It's not big. Uh, it doesn't make up for all the inflow days. We're still up about 15 billion overall. So it's nonsense that it would be dipping to the rate that it would, unless it's pure, manip pure manipulation. So just bear that in mind. And also, um, I, I think, again, that we're almost towards the end of that right now. Uh, just manipulation. Don't put too much into it. The, the, the run, that run you've been waiting for, it's almost here. Uh, so, <clears throat> what else? Hey, guys, do you like risk-based gaming? Because if you do, I got a place for you. It's called TerraCasino.io. Uh, and... Uh, if you want to use Luna Classic, Luna, Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum, BNB, BUSD, Polygon, uh, do you want to use USDC, USDT, Dogecoin, whatever you have, whatever you're wanting to use, you can do this to wager on sports, PVP, poker, uh, any kind of uh, 
slot machines, uh, there's live casino play, all kinds of different stuff for you to do. And if you just want to stick with crypto, you can also wager on crypto as well. Uh, certainly go check this out. There is a link in the description down below uh, and you get bonuses all the time. There's plenty of different things that they, they give you. They give you money to continue playing over here. Uh, this is, and by the way, by the way, they do, this is important, uh, they do sponsor the channel. I'm just messing with you guys. Check out Terra Casino. Uh, and if you need to do some trading, do it with Terraport. That's where I do my trading right now. I'm doing everything on Terraport. Uh, I just traded my Rakoffs. Uh, I keep saying Rakoff or Rakoff because I just go with it. I just go with it because it's actually Jed Rakoff in the United States, but they call it Rakoff, which you'll see in just a few minutes. Uh, and then finally, uh, let's talk about what is the Anchor Protocol? Uh, why was this thing successful? Well, <clears throat> this is what Anchor looked like back then. And basically, what would happen here is you would put your UST in right here. Uh, you would make that bonded Luna, and then it would go into the Anchor protocol. From there, it would be a staking mechanism, which would then buy the Anchor UST liquidity pool. That would put you in here with an APY of 61%. It was wild, okay? Uh, then you would borrow against even your own money. You would borrow UST in order to go into one of these osmosis pools, this, by the way, funded by Whitewell, as you can see right here, money coming in and out right there. Uh, and then when you take your money out of the osmosis pool, you would put it back into Terra, which would go back into Bond and, and you would start it all over again. This was a mill for money. That was the way that this worked. Now, there were some issues with it, which we are trying to avoid when this thing comes back. But uh, this was this is this is a mill process. This was basically printing money. Remember. This thing was printing money as we were going through a bear market. So, uh, without further ado, uh, let's talk about Raycuff. We got an interview for you. I've got LL and I've got Frag, the developers for Raycuff, and they're going to talk about how Raycuff is going forward, how Anchor Protocol fits into their scheme of world domination, and how it's going to benefit the Luna Classic ecosystem. So, enjoy this, and thank you very much. And remember, it's not financial advice. But I'm always right. Folks, if crypto goes up, you need more crypto. If crypto goes sideways, you need more crypto. If crypto goes down, you need even more crypto. What better place to do it than cryptonomy.finance? Remember, cryptonomy is a hedge against whatever might befall this economy and this market. So let's check it out. Since the last time we talked, 2.3x return, 2.95x return, 2.37x return, 1.4x return, 1.59x return. Now, in the meantime, I'm going to take my XRP. I've got 12,800 XRP. I'm going to max that out. I'm going to stake this for uh, nine months here. 71.8% yield return. That's going to give me an estimated amount, 9,208 more XRP. Don't you want more XRP? Now that I've done that, I'm going to go back over here to the launch pool. I'm going to throw in about half a Bitcoin. Again, I'm going to be in the bronze level. Put 0.43 in. That's a good risk for me and a good return for me. Folks, it doesn't get any simpler than this. If you are looking for more crypto, stake it. That's what everybody tells you, right? So do that and you should be fine. But I'm not a financial advisor. If you want financial advice, go to the research section of cryptonomy.finance and they'll tell you what you need to know. We'll talk to you again very, very soon. All right, what is going on, everybody? I am here with LL and Frag. They are the developers behind the Rackoff token. What's going on, guys? Hey, everything's fine. And you? <laughs> I'm doing good. Leaves. <laughs> everything fine here. LL, how did you get into crypto? Uh, okay, into crypto I got in 2020 after the uh, March crash. Um, I was aware of crypto like before, like I knew what Bitcoin was and stuff. I followed it, but I never invested. I never touched it. And after the crash, I got into crypto. I bought my first Bitcoin. Um, I think like $50 or 100 something like this. The transfer on my wallet was like insane. The longest 15 minutes of my life. Um, and then that's how it started. Then I dipped my toes into altcoins and stuff. And later Luna Classics follow. Nice. And Frag, what about you? What got you into crypto? Yeah, it's actually, it, it's actually pretty much the same. Like I, I was invested in the like old Terra chain already, like for like half a year or so. Uh, yeah. So I, I bought some Luna. That was actually the first crypto I, I bought ever. <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, and then after the crash, like I was like kind of freaked out a bit. Uh, 
because I I I I didn't lost uh, I didn't lost like uh, like just dust amount of money. Yeah, it was a bit significant, a little bit more significant, but but not too heavy. Uh, and uh, yeah, after the crash, uh, I kind of uh, got out for one two months uh, out of crypto, and then like I kind of I followed followed everything on Twitter, and so I saw that the community is kind of reassembling. Um, and then, yeah, then I basically got back into crypto, like into the terrific community. And then I engaged uh, first with like uh, Rex from from Terrace Reader. Uh, and then I got into the L1 team uh, on Terra Classic and uh, we fixed some stuff and uh, brought the blockchain back to parity. And then, yeah, and then I went on from there, like like engaging as a community member and yeah, that's basic. That's the background, basically. All right. Well, um, so you got in. Yeah, you got in. Uh, you obviously found a passion in developing on Luna Classic, and that leads us to Rakoff. How do we end up? We know Judge Jed Rakoff is an 82-year-old um, bad actor in the crypto space, in my opinion. He's uh, very old, very set in his ways, and ignored Judge Annalisa Torres' rulings about XRP in order to do his um, case against Terraform Labs. So what got you guys um, with the name Rackoff? And then a uh, follow-up question will be, um, how, what, do you, what, do you, what do you guys have planned for Rackoff going? So what got you started uh, and what got you interested in using the name Rackoff and everything like that? Okay, so to be quite honest with you, um, I knew that there there was this judge and I know his stance on crypto and on, on the case. Um, that's not the reason why we chose him. Um, the, the reason, to be honest, is that um, it was a name that was not used by anybody on Solana or somewhere else. I just couldn't find it. Um, and like, even though Frank and I had like the vision for the token before with Lung Goblins and stuff, we talked about it on, on the last space. Um, we actually hadn't planned to launch this. Like it was something spontaneously that, that I did to showcase something to a friend initially. So I just looked up something that wasn't there and made some sense. And uh, while I was explaining to my friend, it came to my mind that uh, previously in the same day, I had read a Twitter um, post where somebody had said something funny about the ongoing case. And I think Judge Rakoff at one point said something, I don't know, he was like kind of making fun with the TFL people or something like this. And somebody tweeted something about it and said, he's like the darling of the Lung community. So I found it fun. And since there was no Rakoff, I thought it's a fun name. And the old man also makes sense, the old man's face. <laughs> now, for me, I'm one of those people that digs in um, and try to figure out, you know, what what makes people tick and stuff like that. So that's the only reason that I knew any, you know, kind of details about uh, Jed Rakoff, because he had publicly said that he rejected the XRP Ripple ruling. And that, of course, meant that he was most likely going to side with the SEC and you know interesting times by the way in the united states uh you were required under law recently if there was nothing being contested or anything like that you had to side with government agencies and that law as that law just uh repealed and you can now as a judge you are not required to default to the federal government any longer so uh interesting times happening here in the united states so um you launched Rackoff, and how's everything been going with that frag? How's everything been going with with Rackoff so far? Yeah, so um, yeah, we we kind of launched it, and um, we uh, it it was like floating a bit around, and we kind of marketing it. So uh, and we um, we. Yeah, we we made some fun on Twitter, and um, uh, LL is, is is always strong in communicating with with all the different uh, people in the Terra Classic community. Yeah, uh, and he has been very strong in finding all the factions in in Luna Classic and kind of uniting them. So, so he's for me he's some some kind of like yeah hero figure who really kind of uh united all the tribes and 
it's it's very funny and 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 that's actually the thing why I think that I mean it's the name Rakoff, um, but for me the token has nothing to do anymore with with Rakoff or with the judge uh, or with the case. I mean, in the in the end, it it, it could also have been turned out like. Uh, Judge Rakoff is like deciding for TFL, and then he's going to be the crypto hero. Uh, <laughs> so th that case could have been like uh, uh, th that. That could have went very, very differently uh, in that sense. Um, but for me, the, the token name is 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 not relevant anymore. It's it's for me. It stands for uniting the tribes uh, or the different factions in the Terra Classic community. And um, I have kind of the feeling that since we initially launched a token, um, the drama on Terra Classic has, has been kind of like, yeah, kind of wiped basically. Yeah. So um, there's four different visions that you guys have that are on here. Increase on-chain volume and visibility. Let's start with that one. What is the... Do you have a structure in place? Do you have a plan of action? How are you uh, increasing on-chain volume visibility? I know it's very tough to, to, to gauge that in this market right now. Very difficult, very weird, very trying market for the meme space and any alts. In fact, 88% of all alts uh, have not responded to what Bitcoin has been doing. So... Um, how do you how do you work towards increasing the on-chain volume and visibility? Okay, so the I, I think we partially did that already in our niche in, in Terra Classic. Um, if you look at the TerraPod pairs, I think like we have constantly like the second most, I think, trading volume. Yeah. Um, and inherently it brings volume to Lang also because um, like, like other like people make profit on Rakoff. Some people miss out. They want to make profit. So they go look for the second best thing, third best thing. You know, it works like this. Yep. Um, there are cycles within like the, the small niche that we have. Then we have other chains where we connected to. Like I think um, Frag basically <laughs> did the first, um, did write the first contract that allows us to send uh, CW20 tokens to other IBC enabled chains like uh, Injective, Kojira, uh, Osmosis. Uh, Megaloo, where we actually also have a pair, then we wormhole our token to BNB, which to be fair, other people also did, but um, because we, um, yeah, we, we got some engagement, um, it just helped, you know, and uh, this also helps the chain because you can basically have arbitrage opportunities. Um, you have, luckily, Terraport also helped us to bootstrap some liquidity for the second pair. So now on the long chain, you can do arbitrage even in between Rakoff Terra and Rakoff Luna Classic. Um, so that automatically brings some decent volume because there is always opportunities for people. That's what we tried to create. Awesome. So uh, the next step up would be uh, create utilities and use cases for Lunk. What um, What's the vision for doing that? Yeah, so um, I, I can answer that. Um, so we basically um had this vision of like introducing utility and use cases uh for uh, not only for for lang but also for rakoff um and um this this was actually pretty much the dream of like ll so so you wanted to 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 have that anyway so and uh the the meme phase uh, is kind of like our introduction to the space and um and then we want to kind of like go on from there <clears throat> and um i think last week it was uh we had um uh an announcement about what utility we are going to 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 bring to to lang and um we kind of figured that um I mean, LL is, a, is, is is he is a founder. Um, um, probably he should he should uh, tell about the the protocol X that we yeah kind of hyped in the last couple of weeks and uh, which we announced um, like last week. Yeah, so uh, let's get into that protocol X. It's very mysterious so far. We don't really have any details from you guys other than that we should be thinking about Anchor Protocol. Now, for those that don't know. Anchor Protocol was basically the lending platform that was attached to Terra and Luna. And, you know, most people say that that was really the driving force behind 
the way that Luna was pumping and how that entire ecosystem worked. And in fact, that it was more impor important than even having the peg between Luna and Terra. Um, so what, it, what is this, what does this look like for you guys? And are you willing to talk about, you know, what you have planned? Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Uh, it, it's your, it's your, you are the founder. Yeah. No, yeah, I thought because you said you're actually the co-founder, so you can talk just, <laughs> just like I can. But. Uh, yeah, so, uh, we kind of uh, basically um, picked uh, picked up Anchor, and um, we kind of uh, figured uh, figured out what the, the weaknesses are. Uh, like, I mean, the, the vision with Wakeup is actually that we want to be a sustainable project. Um, and this started out with the with the meme phase where we actually uh, we put most of the supply into the in, into the pool um, and um, we don't want to dilute holders by um, giving out rewards for for example by providing liquidity um, so we are pretty much the only at the moment currently the only meme project which doesn't like give out rewards through through some kind of farming option or so. Um, and, um, and we are trying to like uh, go on with this uh, kind of sustainability. And we picked up Anchor Protocol and we saw, um, I mean, the thing that, that made Anchor extremely unsustainable is this kind of fixed rate of 20% on, on, the, on the stable coin. Right. And um, yeah, I, we kind of adopted um a mechanism to find out a real lending market apr rate uh like a balance rate um that is governed by the forces of the market like demand of, uh, and supply of in this case demand of supply uh the demand and supply of like lending and borrowing <clears throat> we want to have a sustainable market driven apr rate for both the lenders and the um borrowers um and yeah we want a sustainable uh basically money flow between bet between the parties and in, in the protocol uh, and that's kind of the, the vision we have uh with protocol x um and that that means of course that we don't want to have like crazy aprs where um holders are going to be diluted um to death <laughs> basically yeah, or that you have to call in somebody like Jump Crypto. Yeah. Uh, so uh, let's uh, let's put a pin in that because Protocol X, I think, is probably going to be one of the more important creations in this ecosystem. So um, let's talk. Uh, let's let's move on, and we'll go back to Protocol X in just a few moments here. But what about the showcase uh, and educational projects for the Lunk community? What kind of educational projects are are we talking about here? There's a lot of people that need to learn a lot about cryptocurrency in all its different forms. So is there a plan in place for that? Or is that just uh, long term thinking? No, so that's actually something that I really would like to do, uh, which is Rakoff Academy. Uh, internally, I am discussing this with somebody in the team. And uh, we also luckily got uh, Duncan, who's also like prominent in the community. I think everybody knows him um, from his USDC repack proposals and his engagement. Um, so Duncan is supposed to basically start the academy by uh, writing our first blog articles where he explains uh, DeFi strategies, um, how to provide liquidity, how to do all the nice stuff, how governance works, how lending protocols work. Um, so we want to start with this and later I would love to have some community effort going on where like all the different developers, factions, um, utilities, L1 developers, teams, whoever wants to can contribute to like a non uh, nice looking GitHub where we collect everything or to a wiki, I don't care. And then everybody who wants to build a nice website can go and grab from that one data source of truth. That would be something great. And you could put technical stuff in there and you could put uh, stuff for the community. Like it would, could be for noobs and for pros. And for devs. So it sounds like what we've got is a cryptopedia coming along that's going to look a lot like Wikipedia, Wikipedia or at least have a, uh, that type of method to it. Is that what you're looking for? Yeah. Oh, ex except for it would 
probably be more a Lunkopedia and a DeFiPedia. Awesome. All right. So um, let's move on to, to the next part, reviving the key partnerships with ecosystem players in Lunk and the wider cosmos. Now, of course, when everything was depegged, when everything was was pulled apart, when everything was halted, the, that created some problems. And, and, and of course, there were a lot of people that lost catastrophic amounts of funds. How uh, do you have a, a plan going forward or what would that plan look like in how to revive some of those partnerships? I think some of the recent governance proposals and some of the recent ideas on Commonwealth are kind of tailored towards making that happen, starting with tax to gas. But um, what what kind of plan do you have in place to start working with these guys and 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 bringing people back in? Especially, in my opinion, the timing feels right for uh, some kind of big move for Luna Classic right now because of what's going on with Luna and because of Terraform Labs situation and they're being forced to shut down. I think a lot of people are looking for a quote unquote safe haven. So um, what does it look like with you guys to to bring these key people back and to provide that safe haven for investors? So um, yeah, the, the thing the thing with Lunk is um, it is basically the mother for a lot of projects right now in the cosmos. Um, a lot of chains or L1 projects, uh, like the ones in the picture actually, like uh, Kujira, I think White Whale and Mars, they were all uh, Terra protocols, if I'm not wrong, that after the crash uh, somehow survived and uh, moved on to being their own chain. Um, there is also L2 projects like uh, Backbone Labs, as an example, um, and others that um, right now, let's say, uh, some of them are not really keen on Terra Classic and the community, but they are still emotionally attached. And even if they deny it, they can't because it's there. It, they've been heavily involved, right, in the past. So if there was a serious project that was like doing something nice on Luna Classic and people would rally around it, um, have some nice vibes and whatever, then maybe those people would actually um, consider even talking to people in the community again, right? Being a little bit bullish, maybe not as investing on the chain, but being involved with, right? Um, and that's stuff that we saw happening with Rakoff, luckily. So um, we got in contact with um, Zencom from White Whale. Um, initially, they helped us, like it's a permission chain uh, as far as I know. So they have to, or not the chain is permission, but the White Whale Dex is permission. So you cannot just open a pool and we had to ask them to do it for us, which they did. Uh, we provided initial liquidity for the Luna pair that we have. and. Um, since then, I've been talking to him and saying, hey, look, we're doing something serious here and we're building and uh, are there any opportunities to basically um, get into real partnerships with you guys? Um, and then we had some nice talks um, in our mother tongue, luckily, so that may have helped. Um, and he's actually pretty excited about what we're building and uh, we are going to apply for the right program of the chain. So then we become an official L2 project on White Bay that has to go through their governance. It has to, so people have to vote on it. Um, so our strategy was to first establish our partnerships within Luna Classic, basically, because nobody was talking to anybody, right? You couldn't, like, right. as an example, you couldn't swap uh, in the Hexagon wallet. Like, you couldn't swap the Terraport tokens because of past things, let's say. Um, and that's something that you can do today. Right now, we're working on getting Hexagon into Terraport so that you can use the wallet in the web app. Um, and that's stuff that the community can also help us with. And we wanted to be like the showcase project to, to show the community, like, if everybody works together, we can actually achieve stuff. And that's basically what we tried to do. All right. So let's talk about the uh, tokenomics here. You've got... Um... For for the Rakeoff token, you got a trillion, looks like supply, 10% uh, for team, 10% for marketing, 5% reserve for future use, and then 75% went into the liquidity. There's no taxes, there's no uh, uh, there's no taxes, right? Correct. And then your vesting terms is 100% vesting for two years, linear release after a six month cliff. Um, and then you've got your airdrops right here. Now, what does it take to qualify for an airdrop? you basically have to be staked with the validator and um there will be a small cap because we don't want to like if you have too long we don't want to like have like ten thousands of transactions if that makes sense but it's not yeah. it's not going to be huge like maybe i don't know ten dollars something like this sure. um and that's basically it 
Like uh, that's the only condition. Being staked with the Rakoff validator for the first one, being staked with any Lunar Classic validator for the second one that is in the active set. And like the details will be published because I have to still discuss them with Rack, to be honest. Yeah. All right. Um... Maybe maybe something that that should be mentioned. Sorry, please. Okay, um, go ahead. Yeah, because something is uh, cause may cause confusion. Um, the modus of the airdrops is actually going to be that you get vested tokens, like they're staked in the protocol. Yeah. V very similar to how the Luna 2 airdrops went. So you got the airdrops, they basically got staked with a random validator. In our case, they will be staked in the protocol. Yeah. Um, not landed out, like just staked uh, in the governance. And uh, there will be a vesting period on it, just like you some of you guys have Luna 2 that you got from the airdrop. And if you go to your wallet, it will look exactly like that. Let's talk again about Protocol X. Is there any uh, is there anything that you can reveal? Is there any details that uh, you want to let people know about right now so that they can get an idea of what this is going to look like? Yeah, we can Sorry. basically we, we, we had a <laughs> like <laughs> we had a reveal party last week. So uh, <laughs> Um, where we kind of revealed that uh, protocol is X is going to be a landing protocol and um, it's going to be, it's kind of like inspired by Cavern um, protocol, which is like the fork from, from Anchor. Yeah. Um, and we kind of had had the idea. So Anchor was original only, uh, originally only for stable coins uh, or for, for, for the, for UST. Uh, and we kind of had the idea to onboard Every crypto on 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 the platform, um, like you can lend out and borrow any any coin that is kind of whitelisted in the in the protocol, liquid stake tokens, um, and then um, the second um, feature will be the um, so so whenever you kind of lend out or borrow uh, crypto, then you have to provide um, this kind of uh, like margin uh, for for your position. Uh, yeah. And we kind of had the idea to have a cross margin account, and um, probably uh, LL wants to talk more about the the cross margin feature. Um, yeah, we so so okay. So basically, um, the idea is the anchor protocol only allowed you to go long the asset. So if you had Luna, you could take it as collateral, um, borrow the stable coin, and then the, the the obvious thing is to buy more Luna, right? And then you could do it a couple of times. You could uh, do more crazy stuff, I think, in, in combination with mirror protocol and stuff. But like the basic idea is go long, right? That's what Anchor allowed you to do with leverage. Right. Um, and what's missing is like you can't go short, right? right. Uh, you cannot uh, deposit your stable coin and borrow Luna. So uh, that's one feature that's missing. Um, as far as I know, they didn't have multi collateral, like you couldn't um, mix different assets in you could only borrow against one asset uh, that's one limitation and you couldn't like have fine granular control like if you wanted to have multiple positions then you would need to manage multiple wallets through one web app and stuff um so that's that that were like feature limitations um and the first thing that frag was talking about is basically like an i think a design flaw because like the, the fixed interest rate thing that was way too high in in the market yeah. back then um but these things are like features that are basically like um kind of missing towards a fully featured protocol for lending and borrowing and our idea was to basically improve it um and then you have also one problem with lending protocols in my opinion which is they always pay fees from your collateral as far as i know so if you have to pay interest um it will be deducted from your collateral but imagine you're down like 30 percent on your position so you're basically selling into a loss to pay interest so the the chart has to go uh, higher so that you can make up for the loss that you made to pay interest if that makes sense it yes. basically eat up your collateral and you get more into the red and closer to liquidation um and like the gateway contract that Frank was talking about basically allows you to um, not have this because you can deduct interest rate or, or fees from the stable account from the stable coins in the gateway um, and that's basically the primary source of fees and that's also the place where you earn the fees that you get for lending so if you do it right you could also have like net zero interest strategies and uh, do a lot of cool stuff one other thing that, that we have in mind is to build the protocol in a way so that 
together with um, Terraport and other L2s that are available or may be available in future in Lang. You could use the lending pools because they're like pretty flexible and feature complete. You could use them as building blocks for, for other cool stuff that you could build on top. And I don't want to tease what it could be, but uh, some people may get ideas. But that's like, I don't know, maybe next year, maybe never. I would hope to, to do it. Uh, and I have discussed this internally with the lead dev and the team, but uh, that's like future talk. But, uh, right. So you get an idea of the vision. Well, it sounds to me like you guys have a plan in place and that we're going to be hearing a lot about Rackoff going into 2020, late 2024, 2025, and that it seems like one of those pieces that's about to bind this community back together in a way that we haven't seen in a couple of years. Uh, is there anything you guys want to say in closing? Oh, by the way, before we go any further, I should point out today, uh, I think in my uh, in my video for today, I bought a bunch of Rackoff tokens on my uh, uh, on my video for today because I decided that this would be the time right now. I think you were down about 5% on the day. It seemed like a perfect opportunity uh, to buy that dip and uh, see if it doesn't have a, a nice little recovery um, going forward. Woohoo! <laughs> That's Let nice. it go, Ray. Right? Uh, I'm glad. I'm glad. To be honest, I was initially when we launched, I was a little bit uh, um, uh, sad because you were, you were like, uh, uh, featuring these coins and you didn't like the judge and i totally got it but i was like oh man it's not like this we want to do great stuff for lung and the actual meme is going to be when we succeed and we gonna have like the name doing nice stuff for lung even though the real one is like more or less uh, not so savvy on on crypto yeah well you know they were they, i was i was hearing about it in in the the back channels but i was sticking with my story until i could get you guys on here uh, to, to, to really do it. And I bought it today because I knew you guys were going to be on here and that would be talking about it the next day. So I figured it would be a great opportunity to go ahead and ape in and, and grab a big bag of it and see what happens. That's awesome. I'm super happy. I, I, I hope that, uh, you will have lots of profit and that you are going to be able to stake some in the protocol. Yeah. Uh, anything, anything you guys want to say in closing? Super excited. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak here and uh, thank you for the questions. It's uh, really nice to have this kind of opportunity to to answer your questions. And yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Um, I also want to say uh, thank you, Bleeves, for um, featuring us, for believing in the project, buying the token. Um, I actually saw a lot of your videos. I also sometimes uh, made some tweets like uh, with time mark, timestamps where to find the content. Um, yeah. And what I also want to like add for the community is um, maybe some people are not aware, but Frag and I are like not professional uh, crypto investors or like, um, um, you know, we're just retailers like uh, yourself. And uh, we were just heavily involved for two years in the chain. Like I just learned a lot of stuff. Frag was already like, uh, like into developing, I think uh, on the chain or on some chains. Um, it's like bootstrapping effort, grassroots movement, whatever. And um, like, if you like, we don't ask for funding or anything like that, but we ask for your support for, um, and just to support your own bags, like your Luna Classic bags, because uh, I don't know how many frag has, but I have lots of Luna Classic, which I bought, I'm holding for two years. I'm still staking most of it. And the stuff that I had to sell was to pay and uh, create rake off, basically pay for it, uh, make stuff happen. Uh, also tweet about it. So if you want to support the project, um, just stay active on socials, um, stuff like this, tweet, support, make people aware that we're doing this and also supporting the Luna Classic chain. That would be very helpful. And thank well, you. There you have it, guys. If you are interested in this, uh, certainly go check out the Rakoff token. It is available on Terraport.finance, which, as you guys know, is a sponsor of the channel and uh, the Anchor Protocol. Is coming back. Protocol X is what it's called. Uh, there's going to be some changes to it. It's going to be a little bit different, but that was one of the pieces that created a vibrant community for Terra Luna back in the old days, and it's coming back. And this is just the start of the revitalization of Luna Classic. It's been a long time coming. It's been a long time developing, but now we've got people on hand who are making real solutions happen in this place. So if you haven't already, consider checking out Rakoff. 
Uh, I'm not a financial advisor. I can't tell you what you should or should not buy. I can tell you what I bought, what I think of uh, projects, but it is upon you to do your own research and figure it out. There is a light paper available to you if you are curious and so inclined. We did go through a little bit of it to give you an idea of what it looks like. Uh, but the rest of it, uh, do your own research and figure out if this is the investment for you. If it is, then you're going to be seeing a lot more of Rakoff token going forward. We are about to get into the thick of that bull market. And I got a feeling that we're going to see a lot of revival coming for Luna Classic. So um, LL Frag, thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate you guys uh, taking the time out of your day. I know it's probably evening there. Um, but you just had Rakoff for dinner. How about that? Sounds oh, awesome. Nice. Awesome. Thank you very All much. Right, you guys have a good day. And uh, this is not financial advice. I'm always right. And we'll talk to you guys again very, very soon.